in this uh, section we will be discussing nutritional disorders and we will classify these disorders into two categories one when these nutrients are in less amount that is the deficiency or malnourishment related problems and if certain things are in excess so first category is of undernutrition undernutrition or which we call malnutrition few of these diseases we have already discussed we will uh, sum those up in short but we'll take the most important ones here the first is koshiokar this disease is caused due to deficiency of proteins in the diet or uh, and uh, it is seen in early age it affects children of the age 1 to 4 years so this deficiency is seen at very early age and it is due to protein deficiency uh, if they are undernourished if they are not getting sufficient protein in their diet then this kind of disorder or deficiency disease is seen the common symptoms of uh, koshiokar are weight loss, stunted growth, mental uh, low or dullness, we cannot uh, directly call it retardation but there is low IQ or mental dullness. And it is characterized, these are the symptoms. The characteristic, how we identify whether the child is suffering from Koshokor or any other disorder, here there is a very specific thing. They have extremely thin body, but the belly is protruding. Protruding belly. The abdominal region is bulging. Plus, there is edema on face and limbs. So, these are two characteristic things. They are extremely thin, but the belly or the stomach part or the belly region is protruding. It is large, bulgy and they have edema on face and limbs. But otherwise, they are very thin uh, very dull and uh, the appearance itself gives us a hint that this is due to protein deficiency and the disorder is known as koshiokor. A similar one but that is due to another deficiency it is called PEM protein energy malnutrition and the disorder is known as marasmus. This is actually a PEM disorder. PEM stands for protein, energy, malnutrition. Now, protein is the building block. That means all the cells, bones, everything for the formation, we need proteins. Here it was only protein deficiency, so the building block is not there and that is why we saw the stunted growth. In this case, protein is also less and energy producing or energy giving substances that is fats and carbohydrates are also less. So it is carbohydrates and fats both are less. So basically it is protein, carbohydrate and fat deficiency which results into this uh, marasmus or disease or the condition. Symptoms, stunted growth. low IQ and this is seen in case low IQ and it is seen in very very early age it starts from the age of one year so it is seen even in early and when we are talking of 
IQ here, not uh, the intelligence that we are talking of, it is the responsiveness. Uh, every child has to meet certain milestones as the child grows. So here the milestones are also attained very less or very slowly and they are extremely thin, so thin that even the ribs and the bones are visible. The reason for such an extreme thin structure is energy is provided by carbohydrates so that carbohydrate is in the muscle glycogen that gets broken down because they are not getting that supplement from outside. Fats which are deposited under the skin that are also used up for all that requirement of energy. So there is no protein for synthesizing new cells or tissues. Energy providing substances are also not available and that is why they are extremely thin, so thin that ribs are visible. So in both the cases, Koshyokor as well as Merasmus, there is protein deficiency. But the major difference is here it is only protein deficiency and we have seen that Proteins like albumins, they are able to hold water in the blood. If that deficiency is there, the liquid oozes out into the tissue and accumulates, resulting into swelling which is known as edema. So there is protein deficiency and that is why this, these two are the characteristic symptoms. In case of Erasmus, all three things are missing. Proteins are not there and energy giving substances that is carbohydrates and fats, they are also not there. And that is why the children, they get extremely thin, so thin that you can even count the number of ribs. So whatever is under the skin, that is fat, muscle, everything gets used up. And they would have less mental development also. So these were uh, the two main disorders. And we have already talked of few more uh, disorders. We talked of xeropthalmia, so we'll just have a list written here. Xeropthalmia, that is drying of eyes due to deficiency of vitamin A. Then we have talked of night blindness, which is again due to deficiency of vitamin A where the dim light vision gets affected. We have also talked of uh, the anemias uh, that is uh, pernicious anemia and megaloblastic anemia. So we'll just write down the list. Pernicious anemia which is due to deficiency of vitamin B12. In case of pernicious anemia, anemia is there that because the RBC and the hemoglobin content is affected. But when we talk of pernicious, the RBCs are large, immature and enucleated. That means without nucleus. We know that RBCs, when they are immature, they are with nucleus and when they mature, they lose their nucleus and the complete space is occupied by hemoglobin. Here they are large, they are immature and they have, or rather, sorry, without nucleus. They are without nucleus. So immature RBCs have nucleus. In this case, they are immature but they do not have the nucleus. This results into pernicious anemia and that is due to deficiency of B12. Next is megaloblastic anemia. It is due to deficiency of folic acid and B12. If both are not there, mainly folic acid, then this type of anemia is seen. Here, the RBCs are large, immature and with nucleus. So 
in one case they are without nucleus and in another case they remain with nucleus they never undergo maturation and in both the cases because hemoglobin content gets affected it results into uh, anemia and we have given different types of names pernicious and megaloblast then we talked of beriberi which is due to vitamin b deficiency another disorder we discussed earlier was pellagra which is also known as 3d disease 3d disease and that is due to deficiency of niacin another disorder which takes place is known as thyroid or rather let us write the disease here goiter and that is due to deficiency of iodine because in deficiency of iodine thyroxin hormone formation is affected and the thyroid gland enlargement takes place which is known as goiter we have discussed all these diseases we also talked of scurvy which is due to deficiency of vitamin c and it results in bleeding gum delayed wound healing rickets and osteomalacia and osteo which is due to deficiency of vitamin b rickets is seen in case of children and osteomalacia is seen in case of adults so these we have already discussed and that's why we just wrote down their names and you know it was a brief uh, uh, recap of it the two main are kosciuszkowski and melasmus now we said we will classify these nutritional disorders into two categories one which is undernourishment or malnourishment but if an individual takes certain things in excess then that is overnutrition and there are certain diseases like or disorders like obesity is one hypervitaminosis is another one and fluorosis so let us discuss those now let us now talk about the second category under the nutritional disorders the first one was when the nutrients are in less concentration or amount that is deficiency related or malnourishment here we are talking of over nutritional disorders over nutritional in this we'll take up a few specific important ones the first is obesity now this obesity is due to taking too much of carbohydrates and fats and this fat gets deposited now there are many reasons for, for obesity not only nutritional uh, excess but the lifestyle also if you consume uh, excess of fat and carbohydrates and if you are not able to burn it obviously that is going to get deposited in the form of fat in the body and obesity results into many complications it results into hypertension heart related disorders plus because of this excessive weight even the joints they also uh, start creating problems so joints related disorders and these people they are prone to heart attacks diabetes and the overall bulkiness reduces their day to day activities this is a serious problem in younger generation uh, this these days because uh, the food has become like uh, fatty and the lifestyle has become very lethargic and this is uh, resulting into obesity the next category of uh, over nutritional disorder is known as hypervitaminosis and 
this is seen in case of fat soluble vitamins because water soluble vitamins if they are in excess they get excreted out so this is only in case of fat soluble vitamins and we can take a couple of examples like if there is excess of vitamin a then this results into some symptoms like loss of appetite and swelling in body parts so a uh, deficiency of vitamin a also results into disorders which we call deficiency diseases and excess of it it also results into uh, problems or symptoms the other one is excess of vitamin d we know that d is essential for absorption of calcium in its deficiency calcium absorption is less and the condition results into rickets in children and osteomalacia in case of adults if vitamin d is in excess more and more calcium would get absorbed and that calcium gets deposited in soft tissues <clears throat> this calcium deposition should take place in uh, structures or tissues like bones but if it is in excess due to excess of vitamin d all that extra calcium would get deposited into softer tissues and uh, it would affect the functioning of these softer tissues so these conditions are known as hypervitaminosis the third over nutritional disorder is due to excess of fluoride and it is known as fluorosis so excess of fluoride results into mottling of teeth fluoride is required for formation of teeth but if it is in excess then teeth they get deformed there is yellowing of it and they become brittle and start to fall off and because of that there are deformities in teeth which is known as mottling of teeth so we have seen that everything in our body should be uh, taken in the required amount if it is in less amount then also it results into disorders which we call deficiency diseases or deficiency conditions and excess of uh, nutrition also results into problems so with this we are com uh, we have uh, completed our chapter of digestion and absorption